before we do get into the final launch coverage, uh, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolton here to tell us a little bit about uh, how he's uh, <laughs> how he thinks that uh, today is looking and um, you know how uh, how we uh, how this gets into the big picture for NASA. Randy, uh, thanks very much for letting me come on with you. It, it's a it's a big day. Uh, I've told you over and over, and uh, today is sort of a continuation of what what NASA has been doing for uh, a little bit more than forty years now in terms of Mars. You know, Mars has always been humanity's ultimate destination. Uh, it's where even the science fiction writers wanted to go. And so, from the earliest time with Viking, the other uh, Mars landers, Maven in September. Uh, we've got insight coming up in 2016 that's going to core into Martian surface and all of those are robotic precursors in helping us to prepare to send humans to Mars from the human standpoint. Today is like day one. This is, uh, I would describe it as the beginning of, uh, of, the, of the Mars era, if you will. You know, we went through Mercury, Chile, and Apollo, and that particular era where we culminated with uh, the landings on the moon. And then we shifted over into, uh, into Shell, where we began to build the lower orbit infrastructure that everybody knew was going to be necessary if we were really serious about, about exploring, about deep, deep space exploration. Because you can't keep coming back to the planet. You've got to be able to have a, an infrastructure in the lower orbit. And then one time, at one point, we want to have a, an, in, an infrastructure around the moon, uh, you know, sort of a, a staging base where we can go on. And that's what we call the proving ground in NASA's exploration strategy right now. So this is day one. Of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Mars era. Uh, when Bill Gerson and I talked to you earlier, he talked, he, I think he mentioned the term like trying to be Earth independent. Uh, right now, we, we consider ourselves to be Earth independent. It's, well, you know, a couple of hours, a crew member has a real serious problem from deciding to deal with them and get them back to a place of land and somewhere where we can get into emergency facilities. If we, we, when we move out to the moon again, we're going to be in a position where we're two to three days away. Uh, if something happens. So that will give us an opportunity for five to ten years to work in the lunar environment, system environment, trying to really make sure that the technologies that we have are as good as they can be, that they're very resilient, uh, that they're very reliable and very dependent, because unlike today where we have, you know, we launch a spacecraft every two or three months and it takes spare parts. Uh, when we're on Mars, we're talking about being away for three years. Uh, it's just eight months right now to get there, so there's no taking spare parts. Uh, pumps have to last forever, almost, and, and everything. That's, that's what we intend to use. We're using the International Space Station right now as a development facility. Uh, also using it primarily to study the human body, how it interacts with the environment in, in microwave. Uh, and then when we get to the proving ground in, in lunar orbit, we're going to do some more studies. Learn a little bit. If we're lucky, uh, someone will come along, whether it's an international